Hey guys, welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy it. This last episode of the show of the year we've got a really special one for you coming up so hopefully you'll stick around for the whole thing it's a long one but it's a good one uh, first we have some actual news our school board hired a new superintendent mr. Joe Knoll who comes from the Marlington local school district we look forward to meeting him sir hope you're watching uh, but with this episode we wanted to do two things we wanted to give the seniors uh, a send-off so throughout this episode, we've paid tribute to the senior class. The second thing we wanted to do was reflect on how this quarantine and being away from school has affected us. So we talk to our family, our friends, and we share our stories about the things that we've had to do and overcome throughout the course of these days and weeks. So also, since this is the last time you'll probably see me this year, uh, I just want to say a few things. First of all, to the senior class, congratulations. Obviously, this was a tough situation, and um, you know, a lot of my colleagues have some things to say to you later in the episode, and they might say it better than I can. Um, but I, I hope, uh, and and I wish, and I, I, I really do believe that this will make you and all of us stronger people who are able to, able to overcome. Um, just about anything, uh, but if there's if there's one thing that I hope that you'll take out of this and just take into your future, no matter what, is uh, is kindness, and I, I hope that you'll you'll take that with you into the rest of your lives and um, make that a part of who you are. And then lastly, I just want to say for myself, and I'm sure a lot of my colleagues um, feel the same way about this, that one thing that that I've learned through all of this um, that I definitely already knew uh, was that uh, who I am uh, to be my, my full self and to feel 100% like myself and who I want to be, that means being around all of you every day. And um, this is just confirmed for me that that, that is uh, one of the, the most special parts of who I am is being able to be around all of you. So hopefully we'll be able to be together soon and um, make a lot of new memories. So, enjoy the show. Have a great summer. We'll see you soon.
What's going on everybody? My name's Jack Leeper, and today I wanna to walk through my top three essential quarantine items. Number one, the jump rope. You know, every morning I like to wake up, hop out of bed, run out into the driveway and hit 20 minutes of the jump rope. It's a good way to wake up your mind and your body, get the blood flowing. Item number two, the journal. You know, I always say that you gotta keep a notebook on hand in case something important pops into your mind or in case you come up with some rap lyrics that you gotta remember for later. Always have the notebook on hand. Item number three, the PlayStation. You know, after a hard day of online schooling, I like to come down here and play some Fortnite to blow off some steam. All right, that's all. That's my top three lists. Uh, of my essential items for quarantine and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I just wanted to shout out three of my favorite seniors, Cole Rothbauer, Maddie Ritter, and Alexis Matil. You guys have honestly changed my life and I'm so blessed to have had you guys as my seniors. I'm gonna miss you so much. Hi, my name is Bridget Fichetti and one of the most memorable seniors I've met this year is Ayusha Thapa. Ayusha is one of the sweetest, kindest people I've ever met. We've gotten to bond a lot over speech and debate in choir in one octave, and she's just such a nice, intelligent person to be around. And I'm glad to have someone so compassionate um, in my life, and it's definitely sad to see her leave from the high school. You know that had a significant impact on my life was Layali. Um, I played lacrosse with Layali last year, and we made a lot of good memories. Um, one time before a game, we went to Pulp, and we barely made it back in time, if I remember. And I just want to thank Layali for making lacrosse so fun and becoming one of my really good friends during the season. And I want to let you know that I'll miss you, and good luck in college. I'm here in my car with my Thunderbird shirt on to talk about the senior that's had the biggest impact on me, Alex Love. I want to say thank you for all the memories throughout band and cross country and for being such a great role model to me during my freshman and sophomore year. I can't thank you enough for everything and I wish you nothing but the best in college. A senior that had an impact on me is Sheridan Myers. She was in my anatomy class when I was a sophomore and she's a junior and that class is like all of her classmen. So I didn't have any friends in there. And she was like, oh, come sit with me. And she was just so nice and we became friends. We just played lacrosse games last year. And yeah, thanks for being so nice to me and showing me that I should do the same. And yeah. Okay, a senior that had a great impact on my high school experience was Grace Raymond. She took me under her wing last year during our lacrosse season and we became really good friends after that. And um, I'm glad that I got to play with her last year, but it's unfortunate that our season got cut too short this year. But, oh gosh, I'm thankful for all the memories we made, and I'm going to miss playing with her. One senior that had a significant and positive impact on me throughout the two years I've been at Canfield is my older brother, Nick. He's always set the bar for me when it comes to football and wrestling, and he's helped me work to get better at those things, and he's always just been a role model for me. And he's been like the end goal for when I get to my senior year of what it should be like. So I'd like to talk about, you know, obviously the senior class this year has had a hard time. So I would like to, you know, take some time and thank seniors who have meant a lot to me. Um, so I do speech, as you may know. And so in my category, I got to work with and you know spend all the weekends with and the weeks of practice with two great seniors so i'd like to thank um sydney kincaid and katrina reed for being there with me and uh, the rest of the team at speech you know both of them had really good years you know competitively um and we had we made a lot of memories a lot of crazy things um kind of shouting out the stamp instagram check that out it's a lot of fun and Here's my dog, but we I would just like to thank them a lot um, for everything that they've done, you know, personally for me, and it's become one of the most memorable years of my life because of them. Also, I would like to thank Anthony again, you know, a fellow journalism classmate, so 
who also made it a very memorable experience when we, you know, made our show the first time and also visiting the weather station. It was a good time, so thank you, Anthony. For Hello. The seniors that impacted my life would be every single one of the lacrosse seniors because they're the ones that started lacrosse in Canfield around like six years ago. And they made a huge impact on our team and it will not be the same without them. Uh, they made my freshman and the beginning of my sophomore season like unforgettable. Um, the senior that I'm picking is Bryson Tarashati and he had a positive impact on me and I think a lot of other people because he's nice to absolutely everybody and will be friends with anybody and he's super welcoming and he just makes you feel really good about yourself and he's really funny and just nice to talk to and nice to hang out with and he's one of my best friends now because I met him in chemistry this year. Okay, so the senior I picked was Layali Kasani, and I picked her because we had a lot of fun last year in lacrosse, and we made a lot of memories, and I had a lot of fun with her at the beginning of the school year, hanging out with her at like football games, and just, we were looking forward to this season together, and I wish we had it, and I wanted to wish her the best of luck. The senior that has had the biggest impact on me is probably Olivia Love. She's one of the most sweetest, caring, most fun people I've ever met. And she just cares about everyone, which is a very sweet thing. She has a lot of love in herself, and I don't think I've ever seen her hate anyone or anything. She's so fun to be around, and she's so caring and nice and pretty. She gives the best advice. And I just love her because she's so loving and giving. And she's really close to me and my older sister because she just loves us, so we love her. The senior that has impacted me the most is probably my sister, Courtney Prout. She's helped me pick all my classes, told me which ones will help me, and she picked journalism for me and she showed me all around the school and if she didn't do that then i would have no clue what i was doing so so i feel like the senior that has significantly changed my life is bryson tarashati um bryson has always just been such a positive and kind person to me and to everybody else um He's always tried to help me, whether that's with like schoolwork or mental work or just really anything. And he's just always been there for me. And I am so happy he's in my life and he came into my life. A senior that I want to talk about that really had a positive impact on my life this year was Aaron Volano. Um, I say this because he showed me that like from the time I first met him, to now when he graduated that it's not impossible to do what you want to do because originally he wasn't supposed to go to Indiana University but then uh he kind of just like put his mind to it and said he has to get his grades up get a get a, get a good GPA his senior year take some hard classes and do good on the ACT he did all those things that year um but he also made time for his friends still he didn't just uh you know grind the whole time he was still social and he really balanced it well his senior year, I feel like. One of the seniors who's had a big impact on my life has been Christine Bennett. Um, she lives just a couple doors down. She's like a sister to me. She in introduced me to all of her friends and I've become close with all of those people as well. And they have also had a big impact on me. Um, she really made me feel welcome to the cross country team at the beginning of my freshman year. And I just think she's a really nice person. The senior I want to talk about is Kaylee Cece. Throughout my two years at Canfield High School, Kaylee's been a really great friend to me and a really great role model. You know, coming in as a freshman in speech and debate, I, I wasn't super confident with the activity. I didn't really understand it that well. And Kaylee was always there to, you know, help back me up and keep me involved and really make me feel at home. And uh, I'm really appreciative for that. Thank you, Kaylee. A Canfield senior that has made a positive impact on my life is Matthew Peckman. He has made 
a great impact on my life because he always drives me around when I need a ride. Another thing is that uh, we always just have so much fun together. We'd hang out about every day in the summer and even more during swim. And I wish him the best of luck when he goes to college. A senior that had a big impact on my life would be no doubt my brother Matthew Peckman. He was there when I needed him the most my freshman year and he showed me around the school, showed me my classes, and he was always that big brother figure. And one thing that I looked up to him the most about was that he joined the high school swim team and I was a little bit nervous because I would be on a team with kids that were way older than me. And I joined and it was the best decision of my life and I could not thank him enough for that. So a senior that has had a positive impact and a significant impact on my life would be Josh Comport. So Josh has been basically by my side ever since my first day of high school. He's literally been like a role model to me. He was in band with me and he was in soccer with me. And honestly, he's just a great kid. So moving on for him in college, I just really wish that he finds success in neuroscience and it's gonna be hard not having him here with me in high school, but I wish him the best and I love you, dude. The senior that I wanna recognize in this video is Sydney Kincaid. I initially met her when she student helped my English class as a freshman, but this year we sing together in one octave as soprano ones. Whether it's just singing with her in choir or her giving me advice on school, I'm so grateful that I got the chance to get to know her. Um, she helped me tremendously throughout school with her guidance and perspective. She's very inclusive and she doesn't use grade level as an excuse to not hang out. I look up to her in many ways, such as her various leadership positions and her kindness towards others. I aspire to do the things that she's done in my future. I want to wish Sid a good luck when she goes to OSU. I know you're going to do great things in your future, and I can't wait to see what's in store for you. Thank you so much for everything. Good luck in college. The senior I would like to recognize is my brother, Ethan, and all the multiple seniors I know have impacted my life. Ethan has been there through the good and the bad times. He has taught me how to stick up for myself and how I can become a better person. And he always brings out the best in everyone. And he's really brought out the best in me and always knows how to have a good time, no matter the situation, especially now. So thank you, Ethan, for sticking through the hard times with me. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a strawberry banana smoothie like Panera makes their strawberry banana smoothies. Ours are super creamy and um, just good, I guess. So I just put about this much strawberries in and then I'm going to take two bananas because this is a pretty big cup and I mean I don't really like care. I have to do it in like a sp specific order. I normally put the Greek yogurt on top of everything because otherwise it just won't blend because the strawberries are too thick. So just in case you're wondering, I have this massive bag of frozen strawberries, so I'm not going to add ice to the smoothie because the strawberries are already frozen. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to take Greek yogurt. You can just get any plain Greek yogurt. At Panera, we use an ice cream scoop, and then we take two scoops of Greek yogurt. I'm using a, we have a ninja, or whatever the heck this thing is. It's extremely loud, so I'm going to have to like leave the room while this is on because it hurts my ears. But yeah, and then I'm just going to put on Ultra Blend. Okay, so I just added more milk. It's like settled at the bottom, but I added like probably a cup, maybe a cup and a half, just because I don't really care if it gets too thin. I don't want it too thick. But yeah, now it's nice and thin and easy to drink. That's how you make a strawberry banana smoothie. Hello, my name's Corey, and I'm going to show you how to make an omelet three eggs with three eggs right here. First, very important. You just put it on a nice medium temperature. You got your pan, non-stick of course. What we're gonna wanna do now is gather material and resources, such as your 2% and 
in your hot sauce for later. We need a bowl. Next time, crack these boys open. What? Boys, we've done it. It's a double yolk. Let's do one more. Actually, for good measure, I said we're doing three, so. All right, we're here. Next up, what I want you to do. Trust me here. I don't really measure this part. A little bit of milk. Now we whisk them up. Just like this, see if we get it nice and yellow. You don't want to see no milky milk in there. If you have a automated whisker, you don't really need it here. It'll, it'll start to get nice and a little thickness to it because they go. So what we're going to want to do now is take a piece of butter because we don't trust the non-stick pan. And we're going to throw the butter into the pan. Voila. We can now spread it around nice and even. I'm not sure. This is necessary. But I like to do it anyways. So we got the nice pan going. Take your sauce. And pull it out. Now you'll notice I have the temperature way too high. And these aren't going to turn out that well. I'm going to roll with it. So, omelets. What do you like in an omelet? Cheese? Ham? It doesn't matter. We got butter. Get your ham. See you now. This is the part of the cheese. Now you'll observe after flipping that I've made a grave mistake in even attempting this, but it looks edible. I forgot one thing. Thank you for watching all the way through. I hope I taught you something. I hope you don't attempt this at home because it might cause injury and or death. Today, I'm gonna to be making a peanut butter mug cake with just five ingredients. It's super easy, super quick, and delicious. So we're gonna start off with flour. All you need are three tablespoons. Already had one in there so that's three next we're gonna use the sugar and all we need are two tablespoons of that now we're gonna add some baking powder and all we need is one tablespoon Next, we're gonna add three tablespoons of the milk. Could be any kind, it could be like almond, nut milk, 
any different. Doesn't make a difference. Where's my tablespoon? Oh. All right, and then last but not least, we need the peanut butter, and this is gonna be two full tablespoons. And you're just, you don't need a super big mug, but like, make sure it's not just a small one or it will flow over once you heat it up. Oh, this is new peanut butter. <laughs> I don't know how to open it. Uh-oh, I got it. That was a bit aggressive. Um, all right, anyway, back to the two tablespoons. very creamy peanut butter which is kind of good boop, boop, boop. let me get that out two tablespoons it's a bit creamy anyway once you get the peanut butter in all you have to do is stir it together and then place the mug on a paper plate or put a paper towel above it and put it in the microwave for 70 seconds. I thought my video almost erased because my battery's low. That would have been bad. I'm honestly going to add a little bit more peanut butter because I don't think I got the full two tablespoons. Anyway, once that's done, then you just mix it together. All the different ingredients. Make sure it has a smooth consistency. It's not like disgusting. It's looking pretty good. Now once I stir it, I'm gonna put it back in the microwave. Oops. And I'll show you what it looks like. It's risen after 70 seconds, then you can put it back in the microwave for 10 second increments. And then when it's finally done, let it sit for two minutes before you can eat it. So how has this virus taken a toll in your senior year of high school? Um, it made it pretty bad because I had to stay home and do online work. What is one lesson you've learned from this? Uh, never take anything for granted. What was your favorite part of senior year before the virus took a toll on your life? Hanging out with my friends whenever I want. Hello everyone, this is my mother and I'm going to be asking her some questions about how her experience with all of us in quarantine has been. Mother, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lowell. Alright, first question. How have you handled having all three of your kids at home as well as your nephew? I think I've handled it quite well. How difficult would you say it's been in making this adjustment? It hasn't been that difficult because you guys have been sleeping in till about the time you get home from school anyways. All right. Um, what challenges have you faced? Probably more messes and later nights up. So it's louder when I go to bed and we have to take care of that. But other than that, not too much. Oh, all right. Well, have you dealt with any similar situations in your lifetime? No, not really. Nothing that compares to quarantine? No. All right. Um, would you say there's any positives in this? Yes. Big change? Actually, there was quite a few positives. And what are those? That your sister, who is 23, living in Columbus, got to come home and work from home. And you guys got to spend a lot of time, as did we. And we would not have had that time together. And all of us got to watch movies a lot at night. So that was kind of cool, seeing Harry Potter series and all those different things, which never would have happened. All right, um, are there any activities that you've done with all of us more since quarantine started? Well, yes, watching movies together at night, uh, puzzles. We've done a lot of puzzles. Um, and just like what about more the conversations. weekends? We've been together more. Oh, well, obviously on the weekends, we've all socialized together more <laughs> yeah all right well thank you that's all say bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.
<laughs> the senior that had a significant positive impact on my life is Athena Polis and we grew up together so she's basically like one of my sisters. She's always been super outgoing and hardworking and super involved in different school activities or clubs. So throughout high school she's given me help whenever I've struggled in any classes for homework or tests. She helped me study for my ACT. She helped me study for my driving test even and she's just been a huge support system overall for me which is why I'm so sad to see her go but I know because she's so hardworking and determined that she has a great future ahead of her. All right. Oh, dang it. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. This is my mom. And today I'm going to be asking you a couple questions. So how have you been handling us at home? Um, well, it's been quite easy. I have a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old, so they're pretty self-sufficient. And since uh, they stay up late and sleep in, I get to do my work in the morning without any interruptions. So it's kind of nice. All right. And how difficult was the adjustment for your job? Uh, it was a big learning curve. I had to learn how to use Google Classroom and I've never used it before. And being a language teacher, you have like, you know, listening activities and, you know, um, speaking. And um, so I had to learn how to do those kinds of things. All right, that's it. So how have you handled having me home all day due to the coronavirus? Well, one thing that's actually kind of a nice side effect is the fact that I have really cheap labor now. Somebody that can get me a coffee, can, you know, cook my meals is really just a, a great personal assistant. So what challenges have you faced due to me being home all day? Really, the, the number one challenge is probably the smell. Um, you know, just having you around the house a lot really increases the, the stench. Okay, so what about being more involved in my school day? How does that affect your normal day, like working from home? Uh, it certainly does affect my normal working day from home. Uh, it takes me away from work a little bit, but I do get to spend a little bit more time with you, which is, of course, nice. Plus, you're getting to learn how smart I am. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kenny Keach. My daughter's Madison Keach, and my stepson is Jimmy Clacco, and he goes to Mooney, and he actually just graduated yesterday. Um, how have you handled having us at home all day? It seems like a long day with the kids here, uh, trying to keep them busy and on task with their schoolwork. Uh, it hasn't been easy, and I don't think they've done put in as much time as maybe they could have, but they're doing a pretty good job. Not too bad. I, I, I think it's good and bad. You know, we're home more together, which is nice, more family time. Uh, however, um, I think sometimes too much time together has has its own problems. I think we're glad to get away for a little while. Uh, I go to my workshop and work, and uh, I think the kids try to disappear into their rooms when they can, or go to the park, or go over to their friends, or do whatever they can do just to get away. Uh, well, having a junior and a senior, I, I don't know the material. You know, it's been 30 some years since I've been in school. I don't know the material. And it, for me to help them with their schoolwork is almost impossible. The worst thing, just just trying to keep you guys busy and occupied. And, uh, you know, idle hands do the devil's work and nobody knows what to do with themselves. I think, you know, at times there's a lot more family time. You know, there's five or six or seven people around the dinner table. And it's great to have everybody here um, together, you know, like, like it used to be when the kids were smaller. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. So during quarantine, there's always some items that we use on a daily basis. For me, it would be a wall or a bounce back, my stick and a ball, and some headphones to listen to some music. And what I do is I go outside and play wall ball for at least 30 minutes to an hour each day and what wall ball is it's basically passing yourself back and forth if you have like no one else to pass with and it's really really important to stay active during quarantine because we're all locked in our homes with really nothing else to do so it's important to 
uh, get outside and do something besides basically binge watching Netflix. So. Mm -hmm. Today I'll be taking you guys outside to show you what I usually do with all this free time that Corona has given us. Um, usually what I'll do is that I will go outside and take a walk with my family and friends. Another thing that I'll do is go outside and play basketball. Usually I'll be playing with myself, like by myself, or maybe sometimes my dad will shoot with me or my brother. Um, another thing I'd do is I'd go on a bike ride with my friends and um, we'll take, uh, we'll go on Western and take the trail. And it's about like a 10 mile bike ride for us usually. And the last thing I'd do is I go and mow the lawn because I like mowing the lawn actually because it gives me a lot of uh, time to think to myself and I also enjoy listening to music. Hello, this is Anthony Biandillo and if I had to choose my favorite memory from Canfield High School, that would be a very hard question. But at the end of the day, the things that I remember most from Canfield High School have been like the little moments. It's certain interactions with different faculty members or students or inside jokes with certain classes. It's those little moments that just made the day so much more enjoyable to get through that I'm going to remember for years to come. Now after leaving Canfield High School, I'm going to YSU and I plan on majoring in political science and business economics. And after that, I have plans on going to law school and also getting my MBA because my end goal is to then go into corporate law. Now if I'm going to be remembered really for anything at Canfield High School, it would probably be my love for movies. I'm that person who's always talking about that obscure movie from the 1950s that nobody my age really cares about. Who else would have a Casablanca poster in their bedroom unless you were obsessed with movies like I am? So, uh, yeah, that's just about it. The most disappointing part of our entire school year being canceled uh, would most likely be um, not being able to play baseball this season. Um, a little backstory, my sophomore year, I was um, not able to play baseball because of an elbow injury which I had to get surgery on and then rehab for 12 weeks. So I couldn't play baseball my sophomore year going into the summer. So I was really itching to get back into baseball. Um, I worked really, really hard to get back to the point of where I was before. And um, one week away from our game starting up, uh, we had to get sent home because of the coronavirus and then the school year getting canceled uh, ended our season. Um, so that's probably the number one thing I'm looking forward to going into next year for school, um, along with, you know, being with all of my friends again and being able to, you know, sit next to them and talk to them, not just being six feet away from them. So that's the most disappointing thing that happened to me this year. I would definitely say that the situation has impacted everybody differently. But for me, it made me realize how much I actually miss school. And I liked school in the first place, but I never realized like how big of a motivator school was for me in terms of like staying focused and getting my work done. I found that over this quarantine, I've become very disorganized if I don't stay on top of things. And I'll have like up and down weeks where I'm like so productive that it's like I'm like, on this high of just productivity and then there's other weeks where I just like can't bring myself to like do anything I just want to like be lazy which is okay sometimes but that was just something I noticed like how this situation has impacted me and um when we go back to school hopefully this upcoming fall I'm going to be very excited to see my friends because I've talked to them but I'm someone who really likes to talk on the phone or in person and I'm just sick and tired of being alone, which sounds sad, but I feel like a lot of people are feeling that way right now. The thing I'm missing most right now with not being in school is honestly the social dynamics that everyone's missing out on because we're forced in like a quarantine. Uh, that's honestly what's the hardest part even as a senior because everyone's moving on and everyone's going their separate ways kind of after high school. So like the end of senior year is a great time for people to continue to connect, be together before everyone moves on their separate paths. 
Um, because it's not even like the formalities of like graduation and other ceremonies that I'm going to miss out on and like, oh, you're missing graduation. That doesn't bother me so much as more as the social aspect of the end of high school. Now, one thing I'm looking forward to once school resumes is starting college, it's meeting new people, it's getting new experiences, and I'm really looking forward to that. One of my favorite memories at Canfield High School was the Jersey themed football game. Really good night. Everyone got along, there was no friction. We had a speaker that we were passing around listening to music. That is one of the memories that I will remember past high school, just being with my friends, cheering on our football players, and singing and dancing. And after high school, I am going to be attending Casals Veda Institute to become an advanced esthetician. My room basically describes me as a calm, vibeful person. That's how I want to be remembered. What I was disappointed about is that we will not be getting a traditional graduation. We've all looked forward to this and worked so hard. And it's just really disappointing that we won't be able to walk across that stage and celebrate with our friends and family. What I'm most disappointed about for the school year ending is that I won't be able to see my friends or I won't be able to hang out with them for a while because I haven't seen them for like two months now since school ended. I don't really FaceTime that often because I don't have time with all my homework and chores and stuff going on. Just hard to. And I just really love and miss my friends and I wish them the best and hope they stay safe so this pandemic can go away faster so I can see them sooner. One thing I'm sad I'm going to be missing out on this year is this year's track season. I was really looking forward to seeing how we were going to do as a team and how I was going to do personally, because last year was absolutely awful. I got last almost every race, I got lapped multiple times in races, in which I can laugh about that now, but it didn't feel good at the time, and I was hoping for a complete turnaround this year. Well, at least I still got cross country to look forward to, because it looks like that season will still happen. I think the number one thing that I'm most disappointed about is not being able to say goodbye to all of my senior friends and not being able to go to the graduation and celebrate all the hard work that they've done. And also um, not being able to be in certain classes where it's like easier to understand if you're in the class. It's been really hard to like understand some things on the online work. Um, but the thing I'm most excited about when I go back to school is seeing all my friends and being able to drive to school without being on a time limit. So yeah. <laughs> Something that I miss is just seeing everyone around the hall and seeing like my teachers and everyone because I haven't seen a lot of them in a long time. And it's just weird to think when we go back, we're just never gonna see the seniors around the halls again. And that like, the, for me, I'm a junior now, like I'm gonna be a senior. So it's just pretty crazy to think about. And I just hope we get to go back in the fall and I'm excited to hopefully see everyone next year and it'll be different and we'll appreciate it more for sure because usually everyone's like, oh, I don't wanna go to school, but now we'll be thankful that we get to. So yeah, see you guys next year, hopefully. Oh, that's where I left my phone. While I have you here, some of my favorite memories from Canfield High School were, besides speech and debate, obviously, were some of the shows that I did, like... And Odd Couple. <laughs> Since the rest of the school year is canceled, what I'm most disappointed on missing is probably just being able to see my friends every day because school is the one place I always get to see my friends. And especially during lunch, we get to like hang around <laughs> and joke around and just be ourselves. So that's probably why I miss school the most right now. And I'm looking forward to most when school gets back is just seeing my friends and having a learning experience where you can actually learn and not just do work at home. Because especially for me, working from home isn't the same as doing it at school because I feel like I'm not learning the same as I would if I was in school with my teachers. So that's what I've experienced from being at home and doing school at home and what I miss the most. So I hope we can go back next year. I hope everything goes back to normal. 
So something that I really miss about school is probably the reinforcement it gave me and like the sense of normality because like right now nothing really seems normal. I feel like it's summer and we don't have school even though we do have school and I haven't really been motivated to do my schoolwork and like my schedule is all thrown off like and I feel like school like really just gave me that like that sense that like oh you need to do this you need to do that to like stay on top of things and I haven't really been staying on top of things which is like a lot of my friends can relate to that too and it's just been crazy and I hope that things can go back to normal and like I hope that next year like things go back to normal again and things don't have to like change in drastic ways and I'm looking forward to like football games next year and just like seeing people again and after this long break that we've had I just wonder like how people I don't really talk to are doing and like not seeing the people I've gone to school for so many years and so long like I wonder what's changed in their lives and I just I hope that everybody is okay and who knows what will happen when we go back to school okay so obviously quarantine has caused us to miss out on a lot but I've been blessed enough to have a lot of family time and we eat a lot of family dinners um, we have a lot of family bonfires and we've been able to play some really fun new games. Honestly, without my family, I wouldn't have made it through this tough time, so. Quarantine for me has really been about getting in better shape physically for uh, the soccer season this summer, which actually seems like it's gonna happen, which is pretty exciting. I've been just working with weightlifting and boxing every day and uh, some running. And so quarantine also has given me an opportunity to reflect on my working habits and how I do my schoolwork and I've concluded that I need to be more productive and procrastinate less in the future. And uh, I'm excited to get back to school and uh, get back in the groove of things soon. Now that school is canceled, um, most of this point about sports being canceled as well, because I don't get to go out for track this year. I was, I was really excited for the season, ready to go out and compete, you know, try to win a couple things. Um, but I, all I have to look forward to is cross country season next year and over the summer training. I hope we get to go out for practices and stuff because I'm missing the team bonding and uh, it was a lot of fun last year and so was track, which is why I'm disappointed that we don't have a season anymore. So, What I'm really disappointed about is not going to school and being able to see all my friends and teachers. Uh, and I didn't realize that I actually liked school until it was over this year. And next year, I just really want everything to go back to normal. I don't really like doing online school at all. Some of the things that I'm most disappointed about from us missing the school year is just getting to see all my friends at school and also missing to watch all the sports that have been canceled this year. And I look forward to watching the sports and seeing my friends when the school year starts up again. What I'm most disappointed about for the school year ending is that I won't be able to see my friends or I won't be able to hang out with them for a while because I haven't seen them for like two months now since school ended. I don't really FaceTime that often because I don't have time with all my homework and chores and stuff going on. Just hard to. And I just really love and miss my friends and I wish them the best and hope they stay safe so this pandemic can go away faster so I can see them sooner. Since unfortunately we won't be able to attend school the rest of the year, or we haven't been, and it's almost Memorial Day weekend, um, I feel like I'm going to miss just seeing my friends, because I really haven't seen anyone in the last two months. I've just been staying home, wallowing in fear. But this situation has taken a toll on me mentally, as I feel like it's taken a toll on a lot of people mentally, because it's just such a big change in your life like i feel like i wasn't even alive for 9 11 but like i feel like like when people had to start like getting used to taking their shoes off at the airport like we're gonna we're gonna have to start getting used to doing things like washing our hands everywhere we go not eating with like people around you i guess or you know just things that seem unnecessary before this all happened i feel like they're gonna be a part of the norm now um my family my family has been i feel like the 
the same as me. They just want things to go back to the way they were, much like everyone else. But they also know that things can't go back to the way they were currently because of our current situation in the world. But um, I guess some lessons I've learned from staying home are that you shouldn't take things for granted. So uh, the thing I'm going to miss most about this school year is prom. Um, I have personally been looking <laughs> forward to prom <laughs> um, ever since like I found out what prom was when I was a child. And I really can't wait for prom next year because I feel like it's just going to be like like pe more people are gonna look forward to it and be grateful for it. And it's just gonna be a better experience for everybody, including me, so. <laughs> During this quarantine, I am trying to stay more positive, but there are times where I'm thinking about the things that I've missed due to coronavirus. The first thing that I'm most disappointed about um, is missing the choir Disney trip. So I've been looking forward to this trip since middle school and it was finally here. I was gonna room with my friends. We were gonna ride rides together, eat snacks and watch movies all night. Um, and I'm very disappointed about this trip being canceled and I don't know whether or not it's gonna be made up. The next thing I'm disappointed about is missing my symphony concert. So I play the violin and I'm in an orchestra called YSYO and we were playing pieces that were some of my favorite pieces I've ever played and I was determined to uh, play the hard sections in these pieces. Um, I was making much progress and then it was announced that the concert was canceled. Even though that I've missed these things, I am looking forward to driving around when quarantine ends. So I was lucky enough to get my license before the DMV shut down. So when quarantine is over, I'm looking forward to driving around with my friends. I'm also looking forward to seeing everyone again and generally just getting back to my regular routine. Even though this time has been hard on everyone, we're gonna come out of this stronger and we if anything, this time is going to teach us to learn to take advantage of the relationships and opportunities that we have. So I kind of wanted to reflect on some things that I've learned, you know, ever since, you know, uh, everything was shut down and, you know, things changed very quickly. And I would say a lot of it goes to, you know, thinking in the moment, I would say, would be the biggest thing. I'm... My mind used to be always in like a million different places. I was a huge like procrastinator and everything. And so I was never really like just like, you know, down here in the moment. But now I'm much more plan oriented, you know. As soon as I think of something, I just get it done and out of the way, which is in such a short time, I would never expect to have been able to say that. Actually, I put uh, this here on um, in, in the last couple seconds because I kind of thought it would be fun in between filming the last thing in this, so here it is and, you know, whoa, crazy mm -hmm. but anyway, you know I've also learned about the importance of like, you know remaining social as I was a much more introverted person just a few months ago but now, you know, talk to people a lot <laughs> um, it's been helpful, you know, to staying at least relatively positive most of the time, which is, I think, as good as you could expect anyone to do. Uh, so, importance of friends, also getting to spend more time with family, really puts into perspective how important all that is, especially as, you know, you look toward the future, you know that you can't, like, forget them or anything. And also, finally, going back to the being in the moment thing, I've also started, you know, I've started writing more, so... That's good, it's fun, it helps me be creative, it helps, you know, maybe take my mind off some problems if I've been having them throughout the day. So, overall, that's what I've been doing, that's what I've learned, and that's how I've stayed mostly positive. So, thank you for being a part of that. One thing that I'm looking forward to in the school year is to play baseball, since we could not this year because of quarantine. And then, one thing I'm not looking forward to doing is going back to school. Um, what I'm most disappointed about is that um, I don't get to see my friends every day. I don't get to like walk with my friends in between classes and like just hang out with them during the day, I guess, or sit with them at lunch or anything like that. Um, 
what I'm excited for next year is being able to see everybody again in the same place, you know. Um, and I'm excited to just be able to see all my school people. <laughs> so this virus had a huge toll on me and my family. The biggest thing that happened was that about three and a half weeks ago, my grandmother was diagnosed with it and had to be moved to the hospital immediately. She was in an assisted living place that had been on shutdown and it still got in. This virus taught me and my family a lot about being extra cautious with social distancing and wearing the protective gear because it saves other people's lives. My grandmother ended up dying less than a week after being diagnosed with the virus and she didn't show any symptoms of it until the last few days before. Um, those last two days she became completely unresponsive and couldn't speak and it was very hard for me and my family because she died so sudden because she was doing so well and then just completely declined all in 36 hours. And on top of all of that, my family wasn't able to grieve with each other. I was basically stuck in a house just thinking about everything that was going on and everything that happened. It was hard because you can't see your friends, you can't see anyone else. I couldn't see my aunts, my cousins, my great aunts, any of the people who were in the same situation as me. And we weren't even able to have a memorial service for her until more of the rules are lifted. And that was the hardest part. And it was very hard for my family and I. And yeah, the biggest lesson I learned through all of it was that you have to really be careful with the personal protection and like wearing your mask because even if it doesn't help you, you're helping others because you can have it for two weeks and not show symptoms and you don't want to give it to someone else who can give it to someone who dies from it. And that's why I think the masks are so important in everything is because you don't want other people to have to go through what me and my family went through. Hello, this is the year of the mask for you guys, isn't it? But my message to you is about this mask. People that wear the mask when they go out shopping or into stores show they care about other people because it's to protect other people that we all wear them. It isn't to really protect yourself, not the mask that we all wear out. And that's my message to you. If you spend your life and you look out for other people and care about other people, all the people in the world, and if that is your focus, then you will turn out great. And you'll be an asset. And in whatever career you choose, if other people come first, you will go far. I love you guys. Sorry about this year. Have a great future. Bye. CHS Seniors, follow your passions, stay true to yourselves. Hope you guys have a great summer. Um, to all the seniors, 
Um, best of luck. If I don't run into you this summer, please keep in touch and let me know how you're doing. Uh, for the rest of you, I will see you back in the fall and I will say adios for now. Class of 2020, I'm glad for you. You've learned something earlier in life than most people ever will. And it's something we could have never have taught you in school. Life is hard and it's unfair, but it's also gloriously beautiful and amazing. It all depends on the lens in which you view it through. You can get bitter or get better. It's your choice. I couldn't be more proud or impressed with the way you've handled these recent events, but you did. And here you find yourself still standing on your graduation day. Rest assured, these are not the best days of your lives, but I'm fully confident you are more than prepared to meet head on the journey that lies ahead of you. To my senior prime time, I love you. Hi everyone. Sure miss seeing everybody in the hallways. This year ended really strange. We had a lot of adversity to face, but we're truly proud of the way that you ended the year. Can't wait till next year to see everybody in the hallways. Please have a healthy and safe summer. Take care. Have a good summer. Have a good summer. We just wanted to say good luck and best wishes to the class of 2020. You've had a lot of adversity to face at the end of this year. We're very proud of you. Don't let that stop you and get in the way of any of your goals that you wish to achieve. You've done great things and continue to do that. Best wishes. Good luck, seniors. Good luck, seniors. Bye, guys. Stay strong. You all got this. We'll see you next year. As the show wraps up for this year, me and Mr. McQueen up here wish you nothing but the best in the rest of the year, and we'll see you sometime soon. Bye everyone, good luck to the seniors, and I hope to see the rest of you guys next year. Goodbye everyone, thank you so much for watching. My dog says thank you too, so. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Um, stay safe out there, thank you.